Jason? Good afternoon, how are you? I'm okay, how are you? Looks bad, thanks. I don't know. I'm sure of the countless interviews that you have done uh, in the last two and a half years. I, I was like the only South African interview you did two and a half years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are again. Yeah, which is, which is fantastic. I must admit, I, I didn't think we were going to get uh, lucky this time because, uh, you know, um, you know, as the album was uh, was coming out, I was obviously you know pushing for an interview because um, I got myself into a lot of trouble on the last one. You see, I I wrote it up and I syndicated it to everyone, and they're all right. Thank you. <laughs> Fair enough. So, so you got good press on the back of that. Fair enough. But how are you otherwise? I'm pretty good. That's good. It's uh, so good to speak to you again, and um, obviously congratulations on uh, on a phenomenal album. Thank you. Um, um, an, an, an obvious one. Um, as I say, I've, I've actually did, uh, drafted a couple of uh, pieces already for various publications and um, just going through all of it. Um, I, I classified, well, I mean, for lack of a better word, but um, the album as being um, sort of uh, probably your, your, mo your most sort of relaxed, most... Um, you know, um, as much as there are issues there, um, not as heavy. Hooray, eh? <laughs> Do I get it? <laughs> Hooray. <laughs> yes, well, yes. Um, and uh, I must admit, the, the opening line um, was that um, everyone who buys your albums um, can never profess to truly understanding where you're coming from. Mm. On this album, um, I think there's a chance, yeah? I think there's definitely a chance, but no more than that. <laughs> they they wouldn't like it if I gave them any more than that. No, no, because I mean, you know, the thing is that um, you know, it's it's almost as if you've you, you've taken a, a a step back and um, you know, it's just sort of uh, as much as it's uh, you know, you you've said a lot of things on the albums up till now. Um, this is an album where you've uh, there's there's an enjoyment factor over and above, you know, the, obviously the issues. I think, um, something happened after I lost the baby where, um, in a strange, this, this might sound very strange and you might have to like interrogate me on this, but, um, my relationship with the deities became much more liberating because they were all taken off my altar. Yeah. And, um, you know, it didn't happen with a lot of fanfare. I mean, it didn't happen with much noise. It was just, I just looked at my altar and realized, no, you're actually a table that just spaghetti sits on and waits for when I have a late night, and that's about it. That doesn't mean I don't believe in the deities, too. That's not... That's not at all what I'm saying. It's just that deities do their job. And um, sometimes I agree I agree with them, and sometimes I don't. And they do their gig like you, and I do my gig. And they just happen to be deities. And I think, you know, no, no um, ridiculous promises on their part so that your heart gets broken. And I'm sure my heart will get broken many times, but probably more by humans now than deities. But then again, you've you you've always seemed to be the, you know seemed to come across as being the ultimate pessimist, you know. <laughs> I think I'm the ultimate realist. Yes, um, yes, and uh, absolutely. I mean, it, it works both ways, doesn't it? But um, I mean, I think if if you're going to crash down and be on your knees, um, um, and because you're having to really look at life like three-dimensionally and there's no good lighting director. I'm not a bad person to have sitting next to you pouring you some very good red wine. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, I know the lighting director very, very well and, and um, we know what he and she can do, if you know what I mean. Sure. And sometimes that's actually quite dangerous information because we all know what, how they can light a double chin, but the bottom line is there's a double chin. 
But I mean, as much as um, you know, thing, things like that happening. Um, although you, um, there was, you know, you didn't need to be humbled by it. Um, it settled. It, it seemed to, you know, um, there was a certain realization there, um, perhaps on on your part, as to, you know, how much control you really had. Yeah, I think it was. Um, of course, it's humbling, and yet at the same time, it transcends that because that's sort of a humbling can also be when um, you do something and everybody acknowledges that you've done something, and it's, it's about using your own mortality. I think um, helpless is a word because no matter what um, favors I can pull for, not a whole lot of things, if you and I are honest. I mean, I, I guess I have favors I can pull for some probably ridiculous things. <laughs> I mean, I'm at Ern again. I could call him. But I get arrested in a fucking Turkish jail. Yes. Yes. Um, Probably not for drugs, though. They wouldn't let me out. But, I mean, it would have to be for, I don't know, something like um, carrying around my David Cassidy CD. <laughs> but um, yes. help us in a way that um, nothing or anybody that, that I knew or could, could do myself. And I'm pretty capable when I put my mind to it. But... Um, you know, could save the life of the baby. And I think that there's something that happens when something like that happens. There can be. I mean, some people just go, oh, well, you know, didn't want it anyway, next. Yeah, probably from a fatalistic point of view as well, yeah. Uh, because I was connected to the being, yes. it obviously affected us in a way that, um, you know, if we if we weren't connected and we hardly knew about it, we might not have, not have had the same feelings. And I accept that, but we were very, very connected, and, and we thought we were out of the woods, and, and on and on the story goes. But I think um, the one thing that it made me really kind of come into terms with was how fleeting life is and how really fragile it is. But, I mean, as in... Know, as as you've done with each of your albums, it's almost as if you've you've taken a circumstance um, or you know a situation, um, you've then put it to music and um, you've risen above it, but through through the aid of the music, um, you know it's almost saying, okay, well look, you've been you know you've been beaten down, you've you've been put through you know through tremendous strain, um, but this is your way of liberating yourself from it? Um, I always take what, what's kind of going on with me to the music. That's what I've always done. Yeah. I'm sure I'll do that. Like, um, you know, as, as I age and, um, you know, God knows what's going to cross my plate. But, um, I think that the music, has, as you say, has always made me try and um, come to terms with it in a way that just three-dimensionally talking about it, you don't come to terms with. I don't, I don't, anyway. No, no, no. no. As I said, I mean, um, you know, to the point now that you've, you know, that you've, you've got the, you know, you've got choir girl out, um, does it does it um, put demons to rest for you? You know, when you put an album out like this on the back of, you know, um, what has happened, you know. Well, it it integrates it in a way that, um, like Boys for Pele, I know it's a very depressing record, but um, I really, I really took that record in, however painful it was, and tried. I mean, it's hard for me to listen to that record. <laughs> and yeah, that's honest. Yeah. tried to um, really get the girl that was singing those songs and what she was saying to me. 
And I think I understood her so that when this came in my life and I'd sung these songs every night, and not, not all musicians, and either way, okay, not all musicians integrate their material. I mean, sometimes I'll meet musicians going, oh, obviously we all listen to your record, but you. <laughs> and um, you're still an asshole, and yet thank you for the information. But hopefully, you know, you learn from the work that's visiting you. Um, you know, I had, a, I had an interview this morning with an Australian who I was very, very tough on, which it's so easy to be tough on Australians. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the men. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You understand, they understand. I nailed him and he knows I nailed him. Yeah. But, but the thing is, uh, I started interrogating him as, a, as, as an interviewer. And he was, like, saying it's not fair. And I was just, you know, playing with him like a cat with a mask. <laughs> what do you mean it's not fair? Yeah, yeah I'm like, you know, if you're going to be interviewed, I'm not a bad person to interview you because I, I might actually have some compassion for you. But he said to me um, something like, you know, a lot of people think that, um, he, he said this, I think, uh, the reference to losing the baby was just one more thing I could market. And I said, do you have a child? Yeah. And he said, yes, I do. I said, have you lost a child? Yeah. And he said, no, I haven't. I said, you've just crossed the line. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So, you know, sometimes it can get ugly. And yet, when I put it back in their lap, sometimes they have a real hard time going, you know, that's not really fair, Tori, playing that way. I said, hmm, absolutely. interesting you find, find that when it's put in your lap. Yeah, correct. Yeah, correct. I mean... And I think that's, you know, you know, any any kind of criticism, you know, that has ever been, you know, pointed at, at any of your al albums, to me, um, it's not to say that, um, you know, that anyone is is wiser than the next, but um, obviously don't get, you know, what it is that you're trying to say through your music. Um, you know, I mean, and it's it's you know, it's a case of even if you don't fully understand it, you have to respect. Um, you know, you have to respect the medium and, and obviously the personality behind it because, you know, these are very real things for you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this, this is a bit strange. But then again, as I say, we, unfortunately, we, we only come a close second to Australians. So. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, you know, I think I can find you some pretty... Um, Hardened, hardened people, men and women. Women blow your mind all over the world. You know, Kate, the guitarist, and I have many talks about. Yeah, for every um, you know chauvinist pig, you you'll find in Germany we can match that in America, and they'll all be women. But as I say, I'm at the point that you are now. I'm sad that I'm going to be missing your American tour. As I say, I am. Oh God, we're there till the end of November. Yeah, I'm going to do my do my dams to get across because you, you've still to come and visit us here in South Africa. Yeah, I know, and it's and it's if you and I are really honest, it's always embarrassing. Why? It's the agents and the bookings and bringing thirty five man woman crew over and what that means, and it, you know, it just makes me nauseous when it has to become about that. Yeah, yeah. And I mean that. Now that you you know you're traveling around with a band, that doesn't make it any easier, I'm sure. Mm, no, because I can't just say, okay, fuck off now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the music doesn't feel that way either. Do you know? I mean, I can't play this album without them. That's that's the funny thing about when you when you play live with a band. Um, you know, some promoters are saying, oh, just tell Tori to come on her own, and John, who is of course, you know. Always my um, conscience <laughs> says, um, well, how, did you rec could you record them? Could you did you ever play them without a band? And it's like actually no. Yeah, no, yeah, absolutely, yeah. But I mean, how, how's that been for you? I mean, you know, actually, you know, taking it out and 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 playing, you know, with you know, with a with a group of musicians and not and not having just you, you know, um, there, I mean, as much as you've used, you know, I mean, even, um, 
on the on the live video, which um, I managed to pick up. I mean, you have accompaniment, but now, but now you have the full band. It's a whole other thing. That's why I really hope you come to the States and hear it, because the funny thing is when people think, like, I have a gratuitous drummer and a bit of a backbeat, that's kind of funny, because you got to know. If Zeppelin was my influence, you have to know that um, I'm, I'm a wannabe Jimmy Page, so you've got to know. Um, they, they do it better than, than I'll ever do it, but you know what? Um, I do understand testosterone in a way they don't. Which is good. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, um, if, as I say, cause I, I know you're short on, on time for it, but um, just as, as, as far as, you know, where you are now, um, you know, after having released the album and having played it to an audience, um, the feedback, um, you know, that I've been uh, reading just all over the shows, I mean, that's always very, you know, um, biased on one side, whatever, but um, how, how do you feel about about the album? I think it was um, just another step, not backwards. Hopefully I accumulated different things from all three records. Some you hear and some you don't. Some you sense, you know. <laughs> With Pele, you don't hear it, but you sense it. Obviously something happened to that girl who sang that record to this record because she's obviously cutting live with the drummer, whereas on the other one, as much as Manu Tetri begged me to recut everything when he finally fucking showed up, um, I looked at him and I, I didn't have the confidence to do that. So now I would be, well, scrap it and if we don't have the, you know, the bottom end and, and, and if we don't have the groove, then erase it. Yeah. But I just wasn't there. So obviously, all the records have, have had an influence from Jimmy Right. Is that your phone? That's my phone. That's uh, no way to go well. But isn't that fantastic? It is. I love it when a journalist has to go. <laughs> Johnny's telling me we have to go. Thank you very much for your time. You were wonderful. Thank you. Congratulations. And I will do my best to get to the States. Please, and if you do get to the States, please let John with us. But now, because I'd love you to come back soon and say hi. That would just be so wonderful. That would be a dream come true. Okay, well, we'll see. Cross our fingers. Lovely. Lovely. Okay.